Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. If you're watching on, on YouTube, thank you very much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button down below. And next to it is the bell notification. I try to upload my videos weekly. It doesn't always work out that way, but when I do, you'll be first to be notified. Also, if you're watching on Facebook, please hit the like button down below and you feel this information is useful and you know someone that could benefit, please share with a friend. If you want to get a hold of me, my webpage is www.totalhealthpage.com. On the upper right hand corner, there is a click here to book. You can book me for a free, a free 15 minute consultation. You and I could talk either on the phone or we could Skype or FaceTime. So hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. I got an email from a lot of my viewers and Key thing is, how does sugar affect the brain? One of the questions was, after a big meal, how come I always just feel so lethargic? I feel fatigued. One of my students always asks me, after lunch, I'm just, I feel like going to sleep. What's going on? Okay, so sugar on the brain. What happens is that when we take in too much sugar, okay, it actually shrinks the brain. Why? Because when we take in sugar, too much sugar, we have to have insulin released. And when you have too much insulin from the pancreas, okay, you get a condition called insulin resistance. Now, the, the problem with insulin resistance is that now the pancreas shuts out about seven times more insulin. Okay? But how it affects the brain? It affects the brain in a couple different ways. One, atrophy of the gray matter. And two, it shuts down the hippocampus. The hippocampus of the part of the brain, it's involved with learning and memory. Now, the key thing about the hippocampus is it has the highest concentration of insulin receptors. So let's backtrack it up. If the hippocampus, which is involved with learning and memory, has the highest receptors of insulin, and you're overloading the body with too much sugar, which is increasing your insulin levels, causing insulin resistance, which will, will, which will tell the pancreas to shut down, I'm sorry, to shunt out seven times more insulin, okay? This is where it shuts down the brain. Also, atrophy of the gray matter. The gray matter of the brain is involved with a lot of the connections and the communication between the lobes, okay? So when, it, when you have atrophy, it shuts down the available oxygen. It shuts down the available blood flow. And it, most importantly, it shuts down the available, what's called ATP. This is, our energy, this is our energy currency. This is what makes us go, okay? So the good news is, all this is reversible. How? You wanna do, again, eliminate the sugars from the diet first and foremost. I always come back to the sugar, okay? You wanna lower that insulin resistance, I'm sorry, you wanna lower that insulin response. Also, intermittent fasting. You wanna give your body a break, okay? Why? Because you wanna make your body more insulin sensitive. In addition, you're going to increase the synaptic connections. Let's backtrack it up, okay? So if the gray matter and the hippocampus are important functions of how the brain works with learning and memory, and too much insulin shuts it down by too much sugar, all you gotta do is eliminate the sugar, okay? In addition, you always wanna take B vitamins. Now you could take the B complex or you could take the individual B, again, B1, B2, uh, B5, B6, B9, B12, okay? Because all B vitamins help improve how the nervous system works. Okay, so remember, sugar on the brain shrinks the brain. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. If you, feel, if you felt this was helpful to, me, to you, please share with a friend. Please hit the subscribe button down below and I'll see you next time. Be good.